Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of Common Sense where we talk about the issues of the day and the political races that uh, we have coming up here in Brockton. It's my pleasure to have today uh, Trevor Packard. Trevor, welcome Hi, Tom, to the show. You. It's great to have you in studio. Um, it's great to be here. Yeah, we're uh, coming up to another election coming yep. up here in, in November. Um, Tell the folks who don't know you um, who you are and uh, what position you're running for. Of course, yes. So uh, I'm Trevor Packard, uh, running for council at large here in Brogdon. Um, a lot of people, when I first meet them, what they tend to point out is uh, my, my youth. Um, I'm 21 years young uh, and don't have a lot of experience in the political world. But, um, you know, to that, I'd like to point out I, I'm a fifth generation Brocktonian. Um, I come from a hard working uh, middle class family. My father was a Brockton city worker, my mother a nurse at Brockton Hospital. Um, so you have really roots to the community. I, I do. I have a lot of roots in the, uh, the uh, Brockton community. And you grew up here in Brockton. I grew up here, yep. My went to school here. Life. Went to school here, yep. Yeah, tell uh, the folks where you went to school. Uh, I went to the Plouffe School back when it was an elementary school. Um, I was actually one of the first classes to get in there when I was entering first grade. The school was just opening up. So you were spoiled. You had air conditioning. I had air conditioning, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is good for this time of year, you know, we've had a heat wave right. <laughs> recently. Um, yeah, and then after that I went to uh, the Gilmore Academy, which is now the, the Plouffe Academy, um, and then Brockton High School, Massasoit Community College, and now I'm at Bridgewater State, going into my final year as an economics major. Excellent. Oh, economics. Yeah. So, uh, you want to make uh, you want to make sense out of money and uh, jobs and, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. business. Of course, of course. Uh, you know the biggest the biggest issue of today, not just in the city but in the entire nation, of course, is the economy. Um, I, I feel with a good economics background, we can really push not just the national economy forward but the city economy, which has been so 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 stagnant lately. Um, we need to bring in private investment, you know, to bolster the economy. We need more jobs here in um, the city for our hard-working residents who really do deserve them. Well, when you um, watch some of the uh, political, you know, Sunday shows and mm -hmm. uh, cable news shows, uh, the number one issue concerning the average voter is the economy. Of course, yeah. Um, now, if you listen to the administration, they say they think the economy is doing great, mm -hmm. you know, um, despite the fact that, you know, the facts are that more people are on food stamps, more mm -hmm. people are on welfare, more people are in jobs where mm -hmm. um, they may have a job but they're underemployed. Yes. Um, and if they are lucky to have a decent job, uh, they're not getting very large, if any, pay raises. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, yeah, you know, things could be worse. That that seems to that could seems be worse, to be yeah. the mantra that. If we didn't do what we did, you know, basically a stimulus package that didn't work, yes. things could be worse. Yeah, well, I mean, things could always be worse, but um, things could always be, be better, too. And I think that's what we really need to stress in the country right now, um, not just at the national level, but also at the city level. We need more jobs where they're not minimum wage jobs, where they're jobs that are lasting, where you have job security, where you earn a, a, um, a livable wage, um, and jobs where people, like, we, we really need to push people to go to college to improve them selves you know human capital is huge if if you have the skills necessary there will be jobs out there for you and i think that's what we need to show uh the people not to give up you know um the unemployment rate is flawed because it doesn't take into account the discouraged workers where um people who've just given up stop stop looking for um a uh a job and you know they don't think that the economy is working for for them as a whole and i think that's what we really need to do so what, what, again, is motivating you to run for counselor at large? Yeah, of course. Well, uh, I mean, the average 21-year-old, yeah. <laughs> you know, people, when they talk about politics, say young people aren't interested in politics today because they're turned yeah. off you well, know, by uh, the whole process. But you obviously are turned on. Of course, yeah. So. Well, um, you know, my, my love for politics comes uh, from a very young age. My, my grandmother is actually a 16-year veteran of the Brockton City Council. So I grew up around that. Um, she brought me to Washington, D.C. a few times, and I got to tell you, I fell in love right at the first sight of it. Uh, it's not just a beautiful city, but, you know, the buildings really show the history, and, um, you know, history is a big love of mine, too. So um, Everyone should visit D.C. if they oh, have they the should. opportunity. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a great take, and as you and I, I know, a lot of the sites are free. You they know? are, I mean, of so, course. Which is a gr it yeah. makes a very affordable vacation if you take a family nice there, vacation. you know? Yeah. 
And it's about um, educating yourself too. If you go down there and you see how the nation works and where our nation comes from, you know, it's a, it's a big thing with me. I'm, I'm young, so people are saying, oh, you're, you're advocating for a younger generation. What about the people who built this city? But I know where this city came from. I know where the nation comes from. Um, that's a big part about history there. So, um, yeah, what, what motivates me to run is just, you know, Brockton's at a crossroads right now. We, 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 need, we need a fresh young face to come into the local politics and see what we can do to change Brockton, to push ourselves forward. Uh, you know, we're, we're at a bad economic time right now. We're at a bad time now with the crime rate, and I think that some of the policies that me and my generation have will be able to push the city forward, make us safer, and just overall push us forward towards economic prosperity. Well, I mean, you hit on certainly one issue that people are very concerned about here in Brockton, um, you know, crime. Yes. Um, you know, what are your thoughts about the state of the city with respect to what's going on, and what are your... Um, you know, what are your hopes in terms of being able to accomplish and yeah. what and how would you be able to accomplish some of what you mm -hmm. uh, want to uh, implement if you're fortunate enough to get elected? Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I think we need to really thank the people from the Brockton Police Force. Um, Brockton gets such a bad rap in, you know, the news and different media outlets for being an unsafe place. But, you know, I've lived here 21 years. My family's been here for over 100 years. And I can tell you I've never once felt unsafe in my home or in any of my family's homes around the city. And I think uh, that really shows how great our police force is. But I think our police force is severely understaffed. Um, if, if you look at the numbers comparative to different cities that, that are similar to Brockton in size and in like uh, the diversity of um, the city, they have a lot more police officers than we have. And we've really need to thank them for doing a good job with what they have, but I think we need to improve on that as a whole. You know, we've had a net gain of two over this mayor's administration, um, which is great. Anytime you can add extra police, that uh, definitely helps um, a lot. I think we also need to engage in community policing. We, we need to get the community involved, and we need to have a more diverse police force. You know, a story, um, one of the Brockton High, high School police officers, um, Officer Montron, um, he was a favorite amongst the kids, and um, especially amongst the Cape Verdean and the Haitian communities, where he spoke their 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 um, language, and he engaged in truly what community policing was. He took a proactive approach instead of a reactive approach. Um, he engaged the kids in activities. He made sure that they were getting a class on time, that they weren't being uh, troublemakers, you know. And I think we need more of that within the uh, Brockton Police Force as a whole. Hmm. How do you think we might be able to? hire more police officers? Uh, well, I think we really need to take a look at um, the officers that are going to be retiring. And, you know, as we, uh, Mr. Farwell touched on this at the debate the other night, they're at the higher point of the wage scale. So if we can maybe get some newer officers in there when they retire, we can maybe add a two to one ratio, add, add two for one that's retiring. Um, we also need you know, at least a five-year plan, maybe a three-year plan, maybe even a one-year plan as to how we can reallocate some money in the city budget to go towards the police and the firefighters and um, see what we can do to cut out government waste and add it to the people that really need it and the things that really matter to the people of the city of Brockton. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, when you hear about shootings in the middle of the day, uh, when you hear about a little girl getting shot by mm -hmm. a BB, um, you know, just walking home, um, it's unfortunate um, how uh, outrageous, you know, at times things are becoming, you know, yeah. and I think, uh, you know, I, I think that people are c a bit concerned about this yes, because, of course, you, know, yeah. you know, especially, you know, these shootings happening in the broad daylight mm -hmm. and on, um, you know, average streets. Yeah. So yeah, I would, I would say, um, you know, pe people are afraid but people shouldn't be afraid. If we can stand together as a community, then we can truly fight this. Um, if, if we help our police officers, instead of looking at them as the enemy, then we can really combat all this violence that's in the city today and uh, make Brockton a safer place for everybody. Well, I think part of the problem is that um, many of the participants or perpetrators mm -hmm. um, you know, have this code of silence so yeah. that, you know, someone might know who just shot at them, but they're not going to say anything. Tell, yeah, I mean, so, exactly. so it's awfully frustrating, I'm sure, for the police. Yeah. And, and um, for the community, you know, the neighbors who live around, you know, certain people, and, you know, they're bringing in, 
you know, bad characters, and then they, of course, won't even identify who they are. Yeah, and I think that's where uh, community policing comes in, too. Um, if we can get up, get, get neighborhood watches back into the city, then we can um, encourage the residents that do see something to actually say something. So, you know, the people who are involved with the, with the citizens that are doing the shootings, they might not talk, but someone else may see something. And if we can get them to talk, it, to, to be proactive instead of reactive, mm. then we can make Brockton a safer place. So you've been pretty proactive. You're involved in uh, community organizations. Um, what, uh, you know, tell the people about what you've uh, been up to. Yeah, so um, currently I work with Coaching for Change. Um, we're a nonprofit organization. We run programs at Brockton High School and Southeastern, and all of our students are uh, Brockton residents. Um, we identify a few few risk factors, and if you fall into our to our categories, then we invite you to come work in an after school program with us. Um, we we entice the kids to come to the program through through sports. We tell them that they're going to be coaches, that we're going to be coaching them, and um, we we actually offer them paychecks so that if they give us a progress report, if they make improvements, if they come every single day as they should, we. We try to get them to view it as a job. So if you do everything right, then you're going to get paid. If you don't, then you're not going to get paid. Um, and in that, we foster economic self-reliance, where they shouldn't take handouts. They should work work hard for what they do. Um, we also get them involved with middle school students, where they go and they, they teach at school programs, too. So we coach the high school students. The high school students coach the middle school students. You're probably aware middle school is a pretty important transitional year for a yeah, lot of, of kids. Yeah, of course, of course. And in the past few years, we haven't had middle school sports, but I know I'm um, a lot of people in Brockton have to say that those are coming back. And um, so we really gave the middle school students something to do when there wasn't anything for them to be doing. And it's not just sports. We also run reading programs and math programs to help them improve their uh, grades. We actually have 100% on-time graduation and 67% of kids in our programs. Yeah, how many kids are in the program? Right now we have about 100 kids. We started That's with great. our um, co-founder, uh, Marquis Taylor, started with 10 kids at the Boys and Girls Club, and he has grown to about 100 students now, about uh, 25 at Southeastern Regional, and we hope to in, um, incorporate as many students as we can. We're hoping we have um, a five-year target of getting about 1,000 kids at uh, Brockton High School. Where does so, the funding come from primarily? Uh, the funding comes from private donors and state grants. So we're able to keep our programs running even through you know, not, not putting the burden on the Brockton taxpayer. That's great. Um, well, speaking of the Brockton taxpayer, mm -hmm. um, what do you see as the issues uh, that the council at large uh, Packard would be involved with, and where do you stand like on some of the things? Um, certainly, everyone talks about this casino mm -hmm. project. Um, what, what's your opinion of it, and where do you stand, and what's your prediction in terms of what do you think is going to happen? Uh, well, with, since since the casino has been the biggest issue, um, I've been an advocate for it. I, I really think that we can help the economy with it. I mean, $12 million in annual payments that we can't get anywhere else is just enormous and can help us a lot, you know, especially with funding the police force that badly needs it. Um, but n not only that, the 1,500 permanent jobs that are going to be created, you know, jobs are what everybody wants and it, they seem to be slim out there now. And if we can add 1,500, which I've heard numbers where 1,200 are going to go to Brockton residents, then that w that, that'll be great, you know, take the burden off of the taxpayer some more there. It'll also, in my opinion, decrease the property taxes if we have the additional revenue coming in from the casino, you know, the average taxpayer will bear less of a burden there. Um, people always say that it's going to improve the crime, or that it's going to increase the pr uh, crime rate, and that it's going to make Brockton unlivable. And I don't see that. I, I see private investment coming into a city that badly needs it. You know, a lot of people don't want to start their businesses here, here in Brockton because they don't see businesses thriving. But I think a casino can really help us in that uh, uh, sense there. Um, what do you think the state's going to do? Well, you know, I'm hoping uh, that the New Bedford dropout hasn't really hurt us that much. Um, but, you know, if anyone from the state is watching, I, I think Broughton is a great area for this um, casino right off Route, route uh, 24. It's a great area. Um, we badly need it, and I think the people, you know, we did vote for it. We did vote vote yes, and that's why I uh, do still, still um, advocate for it. Um, if the people want it, then I'm all for it. Hmm. Um. It's interesting, you know, um, with the Everett project and Steve mm -hmm. Wynn, um, you know, I can't help being, but be a little bit cynical and 
view things uh, where uh, people, I think, are trying to aid and abet Mr. Wynn in terms mm -hmm. of um, ha making sure that his project uh, is built and up and running yeah. before anything, you know, in southeastern Massachusetts, yeah. you know. So whether the Gaming Commission is going to say, okay, give us the green light, mm -hmm. if they did, I can't imagine it's going to come at a point where Brockton could ever open up prior to Everett, you know. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, we, you know, time will tell what the situation yeah, is there. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think even if it is a long, long timetable to get this uh, casino here in Brockton, I think that it would definitely be worth it in um, the long run. That's one thing that really I I take pride in is that you know I'm 21 years old and in 20, 30 years I'm still going to be here. You know I'm still going to be raising a family here. My family has always been from Brockton and they always will be. And um, I think that those annual payments to the city will benefit not everybody today and tomorrow, but me and my family 20, 30 years down uh, the road when I'm still here. Um. Obviously, the power plant's a huge issue mm -hmm. here in Brockton. Um, it kind of amazed me uh, in the last mayoral election um, that the people in in that ward, Ward Four, mm -hmm. I thought would have been overwhelmingly against, but it didn't seem that way in terms of the uh, the mayoral vote. It was pretty, you know, close in that ward. Yeah. You had one uh, 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 person who turns out to be the mayor, Bill Carpenter, mm -hmm. who was certainly for it, mm -hmm. Linda Balzotti, who was against it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you would have thought that the people in that ward would predominantly be against it, but when you looked at the numbers, uh, mayor, at the time, Mayor Balzotti won that ward, but mm -hmm. not by an overwhelming yeah. amount. So. It kind of sends mixed messages about where people are in in, in that ward, about yeah. let alone the rest of the city. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what are your thoughts and where are you with respect to that issue? Yeah, well, personally, with the power plant, I would be against it. Um, I've talked to the constituency, I've talked to a number of people throughout the city, and it seems that they do not want it. It's very, very close, but I think that the people of Brockton truly do not want it here. Um, I see the economic benefit coming from it. But I'm not ready to give do you that think, up. How how close do you think it is in terms of pro and against? I'd say uh, against. You know, it's about 60-40. Um, so I would say that's still a majority. But I think the biggest thing, and you know, Councilor Monahan tr uh, tried doing this before. We need to let the people vote on it, um, regardless of what people think. It's been almost 10 years now. You know, it's been it's been an issue since my grandmother was in office, and um, I think it truly needs needs to um, end. And if we let the people vote on it as we did the um, casino. We can get a true, true voice of what the city wants. Mm. Have you done any research in terms of you know, the litigation and where Brockton could end up with respect to the if if the city continues to fight the fight? And yeah, well, and well, obviously, you know, any lawsuit coming against the city is horrible. We can't be involved, you know, tied up in all these legal fees and not be pushing it forward if. If we let the people vote, I feel that we can maybe get the power plant developers to back down. And um, if the people don't want it, then it should not be here. But um, yeah, I'd say the litigation definitely needs needs to um, end. And hmm. you know, it's just not good for the city as a um, uh, um, whole. Well, uh, what else? Uh, what other issues are you concerned with here in the city? What about housing and affordable housing, and you know, the construction that's being done downtown? Yeah, of course. Well. Um, I think the downtown area of Brockton is something that truly needs to be revitalized. You know, it's a great area. Brockton is truly a beautiful city, and people don't see that driving through now. If we can get, you know, downtown uh, revitalized, we can entice business to come down there. If we can get housing down there too, if we can set up some um, apartment complexes, that that'll be uh, great. Anything that can bring people to the city and make them stay here, I think, is a wonderful thing to do. And uh, Brockton truly needs it right now. Well, I mean, I, I certainly agree with you. There's a lot that Brockton has to offer. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're a great location. We're close to Cape Cod. We're mm -hmm. very close to Boston. We have the train. Um, we have certainly um, a variety of stores and restaurants mm -hmm. and plenty of variety for people. I mean, you know, some communities, there's not much around. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and, you know, we have the mall. I mean, if you need to do shopping up there, mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, for a gift, you know, you have Macy's. Yeah, I mean, you just have a variety of stores, you know, at your fingertips to get whatever it is that you may need. Um, so I, I, I would agree. I think it's a, it's a great place. Um, yeah, it is. And uh, Brockton, you know, it, it gets a bad rap in uh, the news, you know, the papers, the TV stations. People only see the negatives. And if people come here, then they can start to see the positives of Brockton. You know, our, our, our youth get a, get a bad name, too. But they're 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 great. I'm I, I'm um, a part of that. You know, I see kids go through uh, the public school system who go to Tufts now. Some kids applied to Harvard, they didn't get in, but you know they were very very close. And you know, I think our teachers are doing a great job. I think our police are doing a great job, and our firefighters are doing a great job. And that's all that we can ask for um, in a city. And I think that Brockton can move forward. You know, it's my home. It's your home. Uh, it's been my family's home for over 100 years now, and that's never going to change. So, you know, a lot of people, they, in my generation, they talk about, wow, I can't wait to um, graduate from high school and get out of here, go to college far, far away and never come back. And if I do come back, I'm coming back to Abington or I'm coming back to Easton and I'm setting up in the suburbs outside of Brockton. And um, I've, I've always said, wow, I can't wait to graduate and go to college and then stay here and make Brockton a better place. And that's what I intend to do. Well, I mean... I know a little bit about the school since I've been on the school committee for um, eight years and certainly I'm aware of the opportunities that mm -hmm. exist. I mean, the, the school system is a very unique system. Um, we have, you know, certainly uh, students from a ton of different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, um, we have, you know, programs uh, that, uh, you know, interest pretty much every uh, Every student we have, there's something you know for them to do. I mean, uh, I really can't say enough about the the district. Um, so we really are unique. I mean, we're we're always in terms of an urban center um, getting awards for uh, outstanding performance. Mm -hmm. When you compare the different urban communities throughout the state, Brockton scores quite well. You know, um, and I think that you know. I think you know education certainly whether you want to go to college or whether you want to go to a, into a trade um, because people do very well you want to be an electrician you want to go into plumbing um, I know someone in the city that is an aircraft mechanic and um, they do extremely well every vacation their family flies for free because yeah. that's a perk working for an airline I mean um, you know if you like to use your hands uh, there's no shame in that there's yeah. you know you know we're not producing people in the trades like we used to so guess mm -hmm. what that means supply and demand there's a lot of yeah. demand for those services Basic economics. you know yeah. right i mean there you go i don't need to tell you yeah. about that but i mean there's there's an avenue for everyone and you know we're very proud of the school system and certainly yeah of course you know, and the um, teachers and staff we have yeah you know be, being a recent product of the Brockton school system only uh, 3 years removed i see the benefits of it i've had great teachers. Um, I, I hear a lot of kids that I go to school with now, they talk bad about the high school that they went to. They said the teachers didn't, didn't really care about them. And that's one thing I loved about Brockton High. I'm still friends with a lot of my teachers that I had. Uh, you know, they still check up on me. I still check up on uh, them. And um, you don't see that a lot in any of the schools. Yeah, I and would say the people at Brockton High and the, and the other schools are certainly very motivated. Oh, know? yeah, they're very motivated. And they love, what I love the best is I had numerous teachers that were Brockton residents and graduated from the Brockton school system. So they, having that personal touch really can help you to improve the lives of the kids that you're, you're um, teaching. If, if you came from somewhere else, you don't have the passion and the love. And I think that one thing that we need to do is maybe get some graduates that from Brockton High School, teach them locally, you know, uh, Massasoit and uh, Bridgewater State, which is where I go right now. Um, they have a great teaching program. If we can get them back into the Brockton school systems, and I think we can really have that passion going forward. Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's encouragement uh, with our human resources department to try to uh, attract, you know, local people to come back, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so ho we're hopefully going to um, have more Brocktonians, you know, coming back to the city and be part of the district. I mean, there's definitely a push for that. Yeah. Because who knows Brockton better than people from Brockton, you exactly, know. Exactly, um, yes. So, I mean, that's, that, that would be, I think, a great benefit. Um, so let me ask you a question. Um, you know, campaigning's not easy. No, it's um, not. 
tell me about how you're finding campaigning, what you're doing, um, what people are, you know, talking to you about as you, I assume you've knocked mm -hmm. on some doors. Of course, and yeah. Yeah, so take me through the process and what you're uh, finding out there. Yeah, so I, I got started up um, early July, um, got my papers, got them in. Um, knocking on doors is really the best way to meet the people of the city and to see how they feel. You know, there's one thing about... You also get in good shape, you know. You also get in good shape, yeah, especially running for uh, the um, large... Uh, there's a lot of ground the to cover. city to cover, yes, exactly. Um, and, I, you know, I hear that a lot, that people say, well, why, why go for the council at a large spot in your first race when you're, when you're 21? Why don't you go somewhere to get a little more experience? And um, I think my youth is really an asset to that. Uh, it can be an asset citywide, and it can really help push the city forward. Um, there is a lot of ground to cover. You know, there's 100,000 people that live in this city that force four miles side to side. There's a lot of ground that you have to walk. There's a lot of neighborhoods. Uh, there's a lot of houses, a lot of doors to knock on. And, um, you know, I have the youth, I have the energy, I have the time, and I have the passion to help move uh, the, the city forward. Yeah, so what have been... What are the thoughts of the people out there when you're talking to them? Yeah, so of course, I mean, public safety is number one on everybody's mind. They, they, they want to know what you're going to do to help fund the police force, to help make the city safer. If they don't feel safe, then they're going to start fleeing. And once people start, start fleeing, then you know, the population goes down and we have a lack of those good, solid residents that we've had forever since we were the shoe, shoe city. And, um, but they also want to hear, you know, the biggest issue is also public education. They want to know what you're going to do to help fund the teachers. We had a lot of teachers get, get pink slip last year. And yeah, well, we laid off uh, around 60-some-odd teachers. Yeah, of course. So people want to know what, what we're doing to help bring them back and to help uh, you know, the school system as a whole. And, and I think you know, telling them about the Coaching for Change program that I, that I work for really gets them energi uh, energized and motivated you know, to help uh, uh, the school system. Hmm. Well. Um, I always have a good time on the show, but we're yeah. kind of getting close to the two-minute mark, okay. believe it or not. I mean, wow. um, yeah, see how quick this goes? <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, in the last couple of minutes, you know, what message do you want to, you know, sell the voters and get out there? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I'd like to tell you again, I'm Trevor Packer, candidate for Councilor at Large. Um, I would like to humbly ask for your vote on September 22nd. I will be 11th on uh, the ballot of 13. There's a very large crowd this year. Um, I just want to tell you that don't mistake my inexperience for incompetence. Um, just because I'm inexperienced doesn't mean I don't know what's right for the city and for the people of, of, of Brockton. Um, my grandmother, 16-year veteran of the city council, her first campaign, she ran with the same level of education and the same level of experience that I have today. And um, she was able to get elected and re-elected eight separate times. And um, I would like to really carry on the legacy that she, she left for me. Um, in, in a positive way, of course, and help move uh, the city forward. Um, I think my youth, my energy, my passion, my never-ending love for the city of Brockton is something that I've taken from, from her to myself now. And um, I think we can really push the city forward if we all band together. You know, there's a lot of animosity in the city government right now, a lot of people bickering and not really getting along with each other, and I think that that really needs to stop. If we're going to push, push ourselves forward, then we need to get along with with everybody, regardless of our political views, our our own personal agendas, and you know anything that's said in the campaigns, and I think that's one thing I would like to commend all the people running for council at large right now is we've all been running very clean and good um, campaigns. No one's really attacked anybody, and that's good because come January, four of us are going to have to work together. So you know, again, I like to just tell you, Trevor Packard, candidate for council at large, number 11 on uh, the ballot. Please vote for me on September 22nd. Well. It's great to have you in. It's a pleasure to meet you, and I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you very much, Tom. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot.